Halmintiasis Definition Halmintiasis, also known as worm infection infestation, is any macro-parasitic disease of humans and other animals in which a part of the body is infected with parasitic worms, known as halmints. Types of worm There are numerous species of these parasites, which are broadly classified into tapeworms, flukes, and roundworms. They often live in the gastrointestinal tract of their hosts, but they may also burrow into other organs, where they induce physiological damage. Tapeworm A tapeworm is a type of flatworm that lives in the intestine, where it attaches itself to the intestinal wall. Tapeworms are flat and tend to be long, usually between 3 and 10 meters depending on the type of worm. Most people with tapeworms experience either no symptoms or very mild symptoms. There are a few different types of tapeworm. Some tapeworms live in water, and drinking unclean water may allow them into the body. Other tapeworms live in meats, such as beef or pork, and ingesting unclean or raw meats may expose the person to them. Hookworm A hookworm is a worm that usually enters a person's body through unsanitary soil. The name of the worm describes the way that one end of its body tapers off into a needle or hook shape. Hookworms take up space in the small intestine, where they lay eggs, which pass out of the body through the feces. When the eggs hatch, the larvae can potentially enter through the skin of another person. People are at risk if they come into contact with the fecal matter or with soil containing contaminated feces as fertilizer. Most people with a hookworm have no symptoms. Some people may show typical gastrointestinal symptoms, and this may be more common with first-time infections. Fluke Flukes are another type of flatworm. Flukes may be more common in animals, although it is possible for humans to contract these parasitic worms as well. Flukes are small and have a rounded leaf shape. Humans get them by accidentally eating or ingesting them, either in drinking water or freshwater plants, such as watercress. Once inside the body, adult flukes occupy the bile ducts and liver. Some people do not have any symptoms, but others may experience symptoms months or even years after first ingesting the parasite. These people may experience inflammation of the bile ducts or complete blockages. They may have an abnormally large liver or unusual readings on a liver test. Pinworm A pinworm is a small, thin round worm that is about the size of a staple. Pinworms are relatively harmless and sometimes live in the colon and rectum of humans. Someone who has the worms can pass them on to someone else through direct contact or by sharing a contaminated object with them. Pinworms commonly cause itching around the anus, which can be severe enough to make sleeping difficult. Symptoms appear during the night as this is when the female pinworms crawl out of the anus to lay their eggs on the surrounding skin. Other symptoms are usually mild, and many people do not experience any. Ascariasis Ascariasis is similar to a hookworm, although it is only a few inches long. It lives in contaminated soil, so it only enters the body when people ingest the eggs. Inside the body, this worm lives in the intestines. People with an Ascariasis infection often show few to no symptoms. However, severe infections may cause intestinal blockages or impair growth in children. 3 Chinella Three chinella worms are another type of round worm that may pass to humans who eat undercooked or raw meats that contain the live larvae. The larvae then grow in the intestines. On reaching their full size, the three chinella worms may leave the intestines and live in other tissues, such as the muscles. Symptoms vary with the trichinosis infection. In addition to common gastrointestinal symptoms, some people may experience chills, muscle aches, joint pain, swelling of the face or eyes. Heavy infections may cause breathing or heart problems or make it difficult for the person to move. Very severe cases may lead to death. Signs and Symptoms The signs and symptoms of halmintiasis depend on a number of factors including the site of the infestation within the body, the type of worm involved, the number of worms and their volume, the type of damage the infesting worms cause, and the immunological response of the body. 
where the burden of parasites in the body is light, there may be no symptoms. Certain worms may cause particular constellations of symptoms. For instance, kinesis can lead to seizures due to neurocysticercosis. Mass and volume. In extreme cases of intestinal infestation, the mass and volume of the worms may cause the outer layers of the intestinal wall, such as the muscular layer, to tear. This may lead to peritonitis, volvulus, and gangrene of the intestine. Immunological response. As pathogens in the body, helminths induce an immune response. Immune-mediated inflammatory changes occur in the skin, lung, liver, intestine, central nervous system, and eyes. Signs of the body's immune response may include eosinophilia, edema, and arthritis. An example of the immune response is the hypersensitivity reaction that may lead to anaphylaxis. Another example is the migration of Ascaris larvae through the bronchi of the lungs causing asthma. Secondary Effects Immune Changes In humans, T helper cells and eosinophils respond to helminth infestation. Inflammation leads to encapsulation of egg deposits throughout the body. Helminths excrete into the intestine toxic substances after they feed. These substances then enter the circulatory and lymphatic systems of the host body. Chronic immune responses to helminthiasis may lead to increased susceptibility to other infections such as tuberculosis, HIV, and malaria. Chronic illness. Chronic helminthiasis may cause severe morbidity. Helminthiasis has been found to result in poor birth outcome, poor cognitive development, poor school and work performance, decreased productivity, poor socioeconomic development, and poverty. Malnutrition. Helminthiasis may cause chronic illness through malnutrition including vitamin deficiencies, stunted growth, anemia, and protein energy malnutrition. Worms compete directly with their hosts for nutrients, but the magnitude of this effect is likely minimal as the nutritional requirements of worms is relatively small. In pigs and humans, Ascaris has been linked to lactose intolerance and vitamin A, amino acid, and fat malabsorption. Impaired nutrient uptake may result from direct damage to the intestinal mucosal wall or from more subtle changes such as chemical imbalances and changes in gut flora. Alternatively, the worm's release of protease inhibitors to defend against the body's digestive processes may impair the breakdown of other nutrients. In addition, worm-induced diarrhea may shorten gut transit time, thus reducing absorption of nutrients. Malnutrition due to worms can give rise to anorexia. Anorexia might be a result of the body's immune response and the stress of combating infection. Specifically, some of the cytokines released in the immune response to worm infestation have been linked to anorexia in animals. Anemia Helminths may cause iron deficiency anemia. This is most severe in heavy hookworm infections, as Nacator americanus and Ancelostoma duodenal feed directly on the blood of their hosts. Although the daily consumption of an individual worm, 0.020.07 ml and 0.14.026 ml respectively, is small, the collective consumption under heavy infection can be clinically significant. Intestinal whipworm may also cause anemia. Anemia has also been associated with reduced stamina for physical labor, a decline in the ability to learn new information, and apathy, irritability, and fatigue. Cognitive changes. Malnutrition due to helminths may affect cognitive function leading to low educational performance, decreased concentration and difficulty with abstract cognitive tasks. Iron deficiency in infants and preschoolers is associated with lower scores on tests of mental and motor development, as well as increased fearfulness, inattentiveness, and decreased social responsiveness. Large parasite burdens particularly severe hookworm infections, are also associated with absenteeism, under-enrollment, and attrition in school children. Transmission The disease is transmitted through fecal, oral route for Ascaris, Crituris and hookworm. Skin penetration for hookworms. Helminths are transmitted to the final host in several ways. The most common infection is through ingestion of contaminated vegetables, 
drinking water, and raw or undercooked meat. Contaminated food may contain eggs of nematodes such as Ascaris, Enterobias, and Trichuris, cestodes such as Kenya, Hymenolpes, and Echinococcus, and trematodes such as Fasciola. Raw or undercooked meats are the major sources of Kenya, pork, beef and venison, Trichinella, pork and beer, Diphylobotrium, fish, Clonochis, fish, and Paragonimus, crustaceans. Schistosomes and nematodes such as hookworms, Ancelostoma and Nicata, and Strongyloids can penetrate the skin directly. Finally, Wucheria, Onchosuka, and Dracunculus are transmitted by mosquitoes and flies. In the developing world, the use of contaminated water is a major risk factor for infection. Infection can also take place through the practice of geophagy, which is not uncommon in parts of sub-Saharan Africa. Soil is eaten, for example, by children or pregnant women to counteract a real or perceived deficiency of minerals in their diet. Diagnosis Specific halmints can be identified through microscopic examination of their eggs, ova, found in fecal samples. The number of eggs is measured in units of eggs per gram. However, it does not quantify mixed infections, and in practice, is inaccurate for quantifying the eggs of schistosomes and so transmitted halmints. Sophisticated tests such as serological assays, antigen tests, and molecular diagnosis are also available, however, they are time-consuming, expensive and not always reliable. Management Medications Broad-spectrum benzimidazoles such as albendazole and mebendazole, are the first-line treatment of intestinal roundworm and tapeworm infections. Macrocyclic lactones, such as ivermectin, are effective against adult and migrating larval stages of nematodes. Preziquantil is the drug of choice for schistosmiasis, caniasis, and most types of foodborne trematodiasis. Oxamniquin is also widely used in mass duoming programs. Pyrantil is commonly used for veterinary nematodiasis. Artemisinins and derivatives are proving to be candidates as drugs of choice for trematodiasis. Mass duoming In regions where halmintiasis is common, mass duoming treatments may be performed, particularly among school-age children, who are a high-risk group. Most of these initiatives are undertaken by the World Health Organization WHO, with positive outcomes in many regions. Duoming programs can improve school attendance by 25%. Although duoming improves the health of an individual, outcomes from mass duoming campaigns, such as reduced deaths or increases in cognitive ability, nutritional benefits, physical growth, and performance, are uncertain or not apparent. Surgery If complications of halmintiasis, such as intestinal obstruction occur, emergency surgery may be required. Patients who require non-emergency surgery, for instance for removal of worms from the biliary tree, can be pretreated with the anthelmintic drug albendazole. Prevention Following measures can be taken for prevention and control of the disease. Sanitary measures Sanitary disposal of human excreta to prevent or reduce fecal contamination of the soil. Open air defecation in general, should be prohibited. Health education Safe drinking water from a safe source, after proper treatment including filtration should be provided. Food hygiene by way of thorough washing of vegetables to be consumed should be insisted upon. Personal hygiene. Washing hands before taking any meal and after ablution should be practiced. Biting of nails or sucking of thumbs fingers should not be practiced. Use of slippers sandals in the neighborhood of latrines and not to walk barefooted. Mass duoming. Several effective drugs with albendazole, mebendazole, levamisole, and pyrantal are available for treatment. Complications Growth failure, weakness, intestinal obstruction, intestinal gangrene, anemia, PM, cognitive impairment.